Contractors versus Adjusters, go! Hello and welcome back to the Contractors versus Adjusters podcast with Peter Crosa, where we teach restoration contractors how to sell their services to insurance adjusters. Now, Peter, a lot of uh, contractors always think about marketing. There's a big question of like, is it worth it? How much worth it is it? Like, how do we go about it? So let's just say we're talking about hiring a mar marketing person. Is it worth it? What, what do you think about that? Well, number one is not as complicated as you might think. Like you don't want to go out and hire, and hire some six figure uh, person that knows everybody in the industry, uh, which there are those kind of people out there and they, they typically have a job for a year and then they move to another company for another year, another company and so on. So uh, it's very tricky, but I mean, shoot, if you're a small operator in a small area of town or even a regional operator, uh, you can find the right marketing rep because, because what they're going to do is endear you to the market. They're not going to hard sell anybody. They're just going to build some relationships and get your brand out there. They're the ones that need to be attending these claims association meetings and uh, sponsoring and putting together some education events for adjusters because actually the number one vehicle for promoting your brand and marketing your services to adjuster is education, providing a one hour because adjusters have to have continuing ed credits for their licensure in most states in the country. And if you can provide that one hour, it's just such an easy sell. Um, if it's a, if, if it's a well done program and I've, I've done this, got contractors have hired me to put on education events for adjusters and agents. But, uh, so, so that's the thing you could find someone, my best marketing rep was a young woman who had no college education, but was very, uh, hospitable. She was, um, very comfortable with meeting strangers and making them feel at ease. And uh, I mean, it, you could say it's a hostess mentality, but I don't want to say that to denigrate anybody. She was just gifted in this area of meeting people and making them feel comfortable and happy. And she was the best marketing rep. I mean, she could turn on business uh, like nothing. The people wanted to help her and do business with her and she brought business into the company. And so that's the kind of person you're looking for. Actually, I have a chapter in one of my books. It's about how to find uh, the perfect marketing rep for your, your business. And there's a lot of natural qualities that go into that. And, uh, and, and, and then some learned skills as well that a person can learn. Actually, in one of my courses, they could, they could learn that, but uh, they don't have to. Uh, it's, it's just, a, it involves a combination of natural talent and some learned skills to be a great marketing rep. And all they're doing is making contact, building relationships, getting your brand out there so it can be done. It's a, it's a very difficult thing in, in some ways because people change jobs, you know, so I've experienced, you know, cause I have to market my series services to the insurance industry. And I've experienced where we build a relationship with one person at a company. And it seems like overnight that company gets acquired by someone else that has a different process or that person changes companies and they go to a new employer, which actually can be a blessing in disguise because they could take us along to the new employer. And that's always a factor. But the, the whole thing is to find a marketing rep. It doesn't have to be as difficult as you might assume. So, um, yeah. Cool. Cool. And it sounds like this person doesn't even need to be from the industry necessarily, or have, have experience swinging hammers or anything. Uh, yeah, at, at some point, uh, what they're doing, their job is getting your brand out there, getting people to know the company name and then she can, she doesn't have to know how to drive a nail or hang drywall or anything like that. He or she could be a man, but they just need to know how to uh, and, and gear themselves to people, put your brand out there, let people know that this company exists. And that way, when, when I or an adjuster like me goes out on a claim and I see that brand, oh, this contractor is here. I know that you guys are familiar with the insurance claims process. And that means so much to an adjuster. 
out there mm. without a doubt. Cool. Well, that is really helpful information and a good another episode of the Contractors versus Adjusters podcast. This this yeah, no fighting. We want relationships, farming, not hunting. All right. Well, cool. Well, if you've enjoyed this episode, please tell your friends and your colleagues. Subscribe, rate, review on your favorite podcasting platform. And we'll see you next time on Contractors vs. Adjusters.